Hey everybody, I'm Sarah. And I'm Vicky. And we're the Drama Mamas. Yeah, we are. And this week we are taking on O. And wishing you a happy new year. Oh yeah. Happy new year, (laughs) y'all. New year, new (laughs) me. New year, new you. Yeah. Our resolution this year was to record some shit. Uh... My resolution was to not call anything resolutions, because then you'll not do it. <laughs> I, I never do resolutions. Yeah, no, anything it's I say. It's too much pressure. Yeah, anything I say, oh, I'm going to do this. Mm-hmm. It never gets no, done. No, I'm not. <laughs> Ever since Sage was born, every year my resolution has been uh, to try to be a better wife and mother in the mm. next year. And mm-hmm. uh, whether or not I succeed or fail at that is... Not my place to judge. I feel like my level of shittiness is acceptable. <laughs> right? Like, I'm all right. Uh, yeah, I I never do anything at the beginning of the year. Like, whenever I decided I wanted to try to s- do spinning at the yeah. gym, I waited until, like, March. Yeah. And, like, I stuck with it. And then when I started dieting, like, hardcore, it was, like, September. Like, I never do anything in January. Oh, man. Well, I did message Zach, or, like, novel earlier about how I wanted to start meal planning, but instead of starting, like, weekly. Mm -hmm. By the month? By the month. Damn. I mean, that's what I did when I stayed at home, Mm -hmm. because I was like, well, shit, how am I going to make this work? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I would fucking meal plan for the month, go to Walmart, buy everything I needed for the month. Did you freeze ahead? No. Well, like, Sonia does that. Like, the meat and stuff, if I wasn't making it then, I'd go ahead and freeze it. Yeah. Portion it out and whatever. But, no, I don't. I'm not. I wish that I could make the meal and freeze it Mm -hmm. and be like, yes. Right. Done. Can't. So, we settled on Shakespeare. That was what got the most votes. That, yeah, I was about to say, we didn't really settle. Right. Well, <laughs> I like that the pressure's off of us. It was a large percentage of the votes for mm-hmm. Shakespeare. I think it was like 75% was what it yeah. ended up being. Not that a lot of people voted, but... Yeah, this could be like three people out of four. No, well, it was more than that. Because there were other votes. Yeah. I, I don't even know, because I tried to vote, and it was never showing my vote. Oh. It's fucked up. Well, anyway. were you trying to vote from the same email you made it with? Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Because it let me vote twice. <laughs> <laughs> so we went, we're going with Shakespeare. Yeah. And we're starting with O, which is a... Did you listen to O? Did you listen to that Spotify? The Othello? Mm-hmm. I listened. I listened to it like two weeks ago when I first... I attempted? When we like... Sh- laid it all out Mm -hmm. and i went on spotify and i found all of the episodes we're gonna do Mm -hmm. i found their audio plays so i can listen to them at work yeah and um that's pretty cool so you guys can go on spotify and find the plays if you want like reference material yes i've got uh, my playlist i made them public so sarah could see them if she Mm -hmm. wanted so they're out there maybe we'll share them on our facebook yeah maybe not maybe we'll see i like a little bit of insulation between my personal shit and the drama mama shit but most of the people that like the drama mama's page know me personally so right like whatever most everybody at this point knows mm-hmm. one or both but of when us. we become really famous eventually <laughs> so anyway we're starting with O, which is the modern othello. take on othello yeah um so let's go ahead and get started. Please silence your cell phones. Viewer discretion is advised. And now your feature presentation. Yes. Info on the movie. It was directed by Tim Blake Nelson. Okay. So that's... Nelson's a first name too, right? Like it that's can three be. first names. Yeah. That's... He's probably a serial killer. He definitely is a serial killer. Yeah. That is criteria. Yeah. Uh, he has you eight... add junior on the back of that, you're... Everybody's right. Everybody's dead. Exactly. He's got, like, skin in the freezer. Yeah. So, he has eight directing credits. This is his third credit, uh, including a short, which I count because it's on IMDb. Okay. Since he has done nothing that I recognize except for the pilot of Z, The Beginning of Everything, that's a, a show on Amazon Prime about Zelda Fitzgerald. 
and it's really I interesting. I was really excited until you said Fitzgerald. Why? Because I Zelda. was thinking Legend of Zelda. <laughs> and I was like, wait, maybe I do need Amazon Prime. It's it's interesting. Like, uh, she was a writer as well. She was married to F. Scott Fitzgerald, who wrote The Great mm-hmm. Gatsby. Right. And uh, she, she was a writer on her own. She struggled with... Um, mental instability okay. which in the 20s i don't 100 percent trust women diagnosed with mental illness because right. maybe she was just a strong independent woman well they were just like female hysteria yeah was a thing and it was just like i don't feel like listening to your shit right you're crazy yeah you're crazy that lipstick stain on my shirt is yours. <laughs> yeah, and how dare you question it? Right. But uh, it it was interesting. She's known as like the original flapper. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and she's from Alabama. So okay. you get to see Christina Ricci try to do a deep Southern accent. Gotcha. It's worth checking out. He uh, directed the pilot of that. So the writer was Brad Kaya, K A A Y A. He has nine writing credits on IMDb, and this was his seventh. Uh, Ooh, before, the only so thing... So he had experience... Writing, yeah. Before he wrote... Okay. Why? Did you think it was amateur? I have opinions. Okay. We'll get into it. Um, so this was his seventh credit. Before, the only thing I recognized was Mad TV. He'd written a couple of okay. episodes on that. Mad! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and since, nothing that I recognized, but there was a video that he wrote called the 41 year old virgin who knocked up sarah marshall and felt super bad about it oh my god so i'm thinking maybe he's not a judd apatow fan it's just a guess (laughs) just a shot in the dark (laughs) yeah okay so the actors i only did information on the guy that played O, the guy that played hugo and the girl that played desi okay so mecky pfeiffer i think that's that's how you say his name that's Odin. odin yes he nice. has 62 acting credits. Nice. O was his 19th credit. And before, the only thing that I recognized was I still know what you did last summer. So he was Oh, that, that shit creeped me out. When really? I was a kid. Yeah, when I was a kid. That's funny. I used to scare easy. Now I'm like, well, I mean, Serenity about got punched when I came in. but <laughs> Yes. My daughter jumped out at Vicky because she's an she's asshole. Up. She's an asshole. <laughs> so since, and then she was like, I fight you back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She weighs You're, like 40 pounds. Right. I was like, dude, my kid is two years younger than you are, and he weighs as much as you do, and yep. I sling him around. You are nothing. She's ridiculous. <laughs> She's so sassy. Since, oh, he did, he was in Eight Mile. He was in oh, Honey. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, apparently I used he's to friends the, with Eminem. I used to have the hots for Eminem, and so mm, I made Shocking. My, yeah, I know. Well, fucking white trash princess over here. <laughs> uh, I made my mom take me because it was rated R. Opening scene is him like, or not opening scene, but one of the scenes is him fucking Brittany Murphy on the fucking sound thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was in Honey, which is Jessica Alba's. Oh, yeah. He was in ER. He was, like, a regular character on ER. Man, anytime I think of, like, every guy ever would be like, oh, yeah, Jessica Alba. Um, where did I put my 2DS? Why do you care? It's bedtime. I just want to know where it is in the morning. He, you know what? You can ask him in the morning, okay? Okay. Love you. Love you know your nightgown's on in backwards, right? The mint is supposed to go in the front. The peppermint. What peppermint? The peppermint that's supposed to be in the front. It's on your back. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Good night. Stay in bed. Okay. <laughs> oh, God, I love her. <laughs> She's just like, what peppermint? There's what? no peppermint. <laughs> no, this shirt is just red. <laughs> Oh, anyway. So, yes, guys dig Jessica Alba. Mm, mm-hmm. She's really pretty. Have you tried any of her, like, uh, honest baby stuff? No. I haven't either. It was kind of, like, after. Yeah, it came out, like, after I was already past hardcore on Pampers. Right. Well, Pampers diapers, huggy swipes. Oh, okay. We had to use Pampers for Serenity because her butt was so narrow 
The, no, I'm not joking. The huggy <laughs> shit would just come out of all oh, that's of just the holes. Because she was just had these little bitty skinny legs, and like we had to use Pampers. They were the only ones that could keep the shit inside. Pamper, yeah, you know, Pamper. Maybe that. No, Sage had fat little. Fat I think legs. Pampers. They at least for itty bitty babies they are just really good. Held. I don't know. They. I hear that it's different for each kid, but mm-hmm. they contained him better Mm -hmm. so we had so many blowouts with huggies that i was just my grandmother she's so sweet but she would get us these huge boxes of huggies diapers oh yeah and like and i kept telling her i was like oh this is really great we do prefer pampers but i guess she got them like at a really good rate but and we couldn't use them because like it would shit all over the place all over the place could have just saved them for Rory. Uh, I wasn't sure we were going to have another one, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> All right. So he was in Lie to Me, which is a show with Tim Roth that was on for a couple of seasons. And, like, it jumped the shark real early. Okay. But it was an interesting, like, he studied people's, like, micro uh, facial tics, basically. Oh, okay. Oh, you know what? I know that show. It really wasn't bad until it got, like, just stupid all of a sudden. Yeah, that's every show ever. <laughs> right. He was in Torchwood, which okay. I never watched, but as a Doctor Who fan, I know people that have. He was in Divergent. I think we watched a couple episodes of it, because it's the one with Captain Jack, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, mm-hmm. we watched a couple episodes. It's all right. And he... Not en- all right enough for us to finish it, <laughs> apparently, but... Sorry. He's a recurring character on House of Lies, which I don't actually remember seeing him in House of Lies. That's the Don Cheadle, Kristen Bell show that's on Showtime mm. about, um, I think, a PR firm. I think that's what they do. And literally, like, they just lie their asses off all the time. It's it's pretty awesome. Kristen Bell's really good in it. I feel like I could do that job. Oh, yeah. Uh, like the spin, I, spin zone. Where you spin it to the positive light. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah. Directly bold face lying about things I'm not so good at. Depending on what it is, I think I would be decent at it. I was like, is that me? Am I this person who's rude? <laughs> Josh Hartnett played Hugo. Yeah. And do you remember when Josh Hartnett was like the shit? Yeah. I do. <laughs> uh he has forty six acting credits. Oh, this is 11th credit. His debut credit on IMDb was Halloween H2O. Oh. That kind of blew my mind a little bit. Like, no. that's a fairly big movie no. to be your first movie. Yeah, I don't know that movie. Well, if you watch Halloween, uh, you should watch Halloween 1, uh, Halloween 2, Halloween H2O. <laughs> Skip all the other ones. <laughs> because those are the ones with Jamie Lee Curtis. I was about to say, mm-hmm. yeah. He was yeah. in The Faculty, The Virgin Suicides, and Pearl Harbor all before O. And then after, he was in Black Hawk Down, 40 Days and 40 Nights, Sin City, and Penny Dreadful. Which yeah. people really like Penny Dreadful. I couldn't get into it, but that's Zach just me. and I started to watch it, and I really wanted to like it. Mm-hmm. But I kept falling asleep. That was me, too. Like, I really wanted to. It's got a lot of stuff that I like in it. Yeah, right? You're like, this show on paper is perfect for yes, me. Yes, but I couldn't. No, I kept falling asleep. I felt really bad because there know. people are always like, how do you not watch this show? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> just fucking sleeping pill. Right? Yes. Yes. Julia Stiles plays oh Desi. Oh my god, I fucking not. You don't like Julia Stiles? I don't, I don't not like Julia Stiles, but I don't love her. Well, in this movie or in general? Uh, you know. I didn't care for her in this movie, but I think that's the character more than it's her. Well. It, that may be true. I feel like I can't think of anything she's in other than this in 10 Things I Hate About You, and I feel like she plays almost the same character. What? They're like... They're completely different. Uh, I think it's her face. I don't... Mm. She's got like... And it. I, you know, I've looked at pictures of Julia Stiles because while I was watching this, I was like, what else is she in? Mm-hmm. Still can't remember because then I saw the pictures of her and I was like, why is she so pretty? She's not in these movies. Mm. I just... <clears throat> sorry, Julia Stiles. <laughs> Before, oh, she was in The Devil's Own, which I brought up Brad Pitt's in that. That's the Harrison Ford movie. Oh, okay, yeah. I don't remember her being in it, but it's, okay. she's got a credit. She's in, of course, 10 Things I Hate About You, yes. Save the Last Dance, and oh. I love that movie. Um, 
since she was in the Born Identity series, The Prince and Me, The Omen, and she's in a season of Dexter. Oh, uh, I've not watched it yet. It's still in my queue. <laughs> well, she's in a season past when it should have stopped. Oh, okay. But it's still all right. Okay. Uh, let's see. So this movie came out in 2001. Yes. Big year. Yes. 9-11 happened. Where were you? I was in my eighth grade social studies class and they came over the Mr. Winters came over the intercom and announced that the World Trade Center had been hit and he told the teachers over the intercom not to turn on the TVs so of course my teacher Miss Blankenship turned on the TV because she didn't give a fuck right and I actually saw the second plane hit which was Intense. crazy I didn't understand what it meant because right. I was only, like, 14, and I didn't know what the World Trade Centers wa- were, right. but, like, we saw people... Falling you, like, out. Well, or jumping out. Yeah. And um, it's not something that you forget. And September no. 11th was is my grandmother's birthday, so, like, we had planned oh, to wow. go celebrate. It was, it was a weird day. I remember that day. A lot, a lot of details about that day. I... So, m- maybe... You caught a hint of me snickering while you were saying that. And it's totally not because... You're a heartless bitch. No, no, because I I know exactly what I was doing. But because you said you were in eighth grade, and I often forget that we're not the same age. (laughs) Because I was like, in my head, that math Mm -hmm. meme where she's like, wait. (laughs) I was like, hold on, no, I was in fifth grade. (laughs) <laughs> you couldn't have been in eighth grade and then i was like oh yeah you could <laughs> you could <laughs> yeah i was in fifth grade and we were getting ready to start our math lesson and then one of the other teachers came into my teacher's room and was like hey and then they turn on the tv and we saw the second plane hit yeah and like you i didn't know what the fuck was going on but i knew it was bad mm-hmm. yeah yeah it, that was a weird day. Yeah. And, like, they didn't cancel school. No. And, but, like, the teachers were just, like, No, not they were done teaching. Anything. They yeah. were done. They, we just watched the news the rest of that day. That was crazy. Yeah. Um, we should have saved that till last because now it's, like, <laughs> and in now- addition to over 100 other songs, the 2001 Clear Channel memorandum recommended banning every single song by Rage Against the Machine from Radio Airplay in the wake of oh. 9-11. Oh. So, yeah, they weren't uh, feeling killing in the name of. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Were they feeling like a rat in a cage? Mmm. I don't have anything past that. The pop song, (laughs) according to the website I went to, was All For You by Janet Jackson. Okay. I remember hearing that on the radio. First generation iPod came out that year. It was $399. Jesus Christ. (laughs) The Vatican broadcast its official public approval of Pokemon in April 2001, (laughs) claiming... (laughs) Let me get through this. <laughs> Claiming that the game was based on intense ties of friendship and lacked any harmful moral side effects. Flash forward to 2017, Pokemon Go comes out and people are walking into the street and getting hit by cars. <laughs> because of the intense ties of friendship. <laughs> and while there might be harmful physical side effects, morally... <laughs> You're good to go. Yeah, that was a pretty solid two weeks. <laughs> People talked to each other. It was cool. Mm-hmm. And then I it was, was not over. part then of that movement. Over. Uh, a 10 year old name. Okay, this is just something cool that I saw. A 10 year old named Laura Buxton, Buxton released a balloon. Right? That's a, quite the name. Mm. Released a balloon with her name and address in the hope of finding a pen pal. It's 2018. I would never let my kid do that. No. <laughs> Your name and address is going nowhere. Right, no. So the balloon traveled 140 miles before coming down and was found by an almost 10-year-old, also named Laura Buxton. They share a number of other similarities as well. No shit. Right? That's pretty crazy. That is crazy. The Oscar winner 2001 was Gladiator. Okay, I remember that. 
Are you not entertained? <laughs> <laughs> the number one highest grossing film was Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Yeah, I could see that. Sorcerer's Stone. Um, the yeah. number two was The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. And number three was Monsters, Inc. So wow. it was a good year for kids and nerds. And kid nerds. Kid nerds. Yeah, uh, it was a good see. year for kid nerds. <laughs> Movie trivia. Christina Ricci, who stars in Z, The Beginning of Everything... Mm-hmm. So she works with that direct. She worked in, with that director. Originally had the part of Desi Brable, but had to drop out due to scheduling conflicts. Mm. So I wonder if that was. Didn't Sleepy Hollow come out in two thousand one ish? I wonder if she that had that blonde hair. Right. It always freaks me out when I see Christina Ricci with that blonde hair. Yeah. And can we just for a second take a side note and talk about how much Christina Ricci looks like Clara from Doctor Who? Because the first time I saw Clara. I was like, does Christina Ricci have a sister? Ooh, you're right. Mm. I see it. Um, Freddie Prince Jr. was considered for I the role like of I Hugo. I feel like I would have liked her better than Clara. Uh, Freddie Prince Jr. was considered for the role of Hugo. That would have been a good fit. I don't think so. Are you kidding me? Freddie Prince Jr. looks like a total douche nozzle. Yeah, he looks like a douche, but I don't think he could have done that, like, dark lurking thing that Josh Uh, Hartnett does really well. He does do it really well. Like, he did it real well. Yeah. (laughs) Although released in 2001, the film was actually filmed in 1998. Did you look this up at all? Uh, not this one, no. When I was watching it. I looked up a lot more on I Other kept saying stuff. that, like, the guy that plays Michael, you know, he's in 10 Things I Hate About You. And he's, yeah. like, like 40 pounds lighter in this movie. Like, he oh, is. Oh, yeah. because it's, gotcha. And I'm like, this movie had to come out before 10 Things I Hate About You. And it didn't. It came out two years after, but it was filmed a year before. Interesting. The film finished production in 99, and its original release date coincided with the Columbine High School shootings. Ooh. And the release was postponed because the film's themes of violence and murder in a high school setting. Yeah. Good call. Mm Mm-hmm. Good call. So, since you listened to Othello recently, I figured that I would go over the general plot of O, and you could go over the general plot of Othello. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. So, the plot of O is uh, Hugo is a high school basketball coach's son. Mm Mm-hmm. And he's very jealous of O because he's the star basketball player. He has the approval of his father. Mm-hmm. His Everything seems to be really going his way. And Hugo feels like he does a lot of the legwork for the team, but he doesn't get any of the credit. Right. So in order to get to his father, he decides to just break down O piece by piece until he's like fucking crazy. Right. So he uses several people to convince Odin that his girlfriend is cheating on him with his best friend Mm -hmm. and they're laughing about it behind his back because he's just trash. And it works. He loses his mind. He goes with a plot that Hugo came up with to kill uh, Desi and her alleged lover. And when it doesn't go according to plan and he realizes what's happened, he ends up shooting himself. Yes. That's the general plot of the movie, right? Yeah. I don't think I missed anything important. Nah. There, I mean, there's not a whole lot that we won't talk about here in a little bit. Okay. So yeah. what? how does that compare to Othello? What's the general plot? So it's pretty similar. Basically, Othello um, is Odin, mm-hmm. obviously. And he is married to Desdemona. Mm-hmm. Desdemonia. Desdemona, I can't, I, I don't care. <sighs> Desdemona, I think. Um, and there's Iago, mm-hmm. who is Hugo, mm-hmm. uh, and he's really jealous because Othello is doing really well. Mm-hmm. He has this beautiful wife who loves him. He's got all this great stuff coming towards him. Mm-hmm. Des Desdemona's the daughter of a Venetian senator or some shit. Okay. Okay, so he's about to he's in big. Mm-hmm. And uh and then there's old Michael Cassius. Mm-hmm. Who is Michael? Right. 
Uh, and he's he's Othello's right hand man. Mm-hmm. Then we have Rodrigo, mm-hmm. who is like <clears throat> down with Desdemona. He's like, oh yeah, I wanna, mm-hmm. I wanna hit that. Yeah, I wanna fuck that. And um, but he's like, oh, she's married. She never. Blah, 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 whatever. Happily married, too. Yeah. Super happily married. Mm-hmm. And then there... No, that's everybody. Iago's jealous. Othello gives uh, Desdemona a s- silk scarf that his grandmother, his great-grandmother, had, like, sewn magic into. You were only supposed to give it to the one that your soul loved. And mm-hmm. this was this great treasure. Um... He gives it to her. She treasures it. She's like, this is great. Iago's crazy, hella jealous. He tells a servant that something's going on. Anyways, something happens. Othello and Cassius have a falling out. Mm -hmm. Iago swoops in. Hey, Cassius, what up? You know what you should do? Go spill your feelings to Desdemona. Mm -hmm. Tell her all the things that you love about othello get back in his good graces through her Mm -hmm. and so they start hanging out well because of this iago's hey like what up othello have you seen your boy michael you know what cassius is doing Mm -hmm. he's doing desdemona and she's (laughs) desdemonan and he ends up getting the scarf away from her and Mm -hmm. othello storms in and it's not like the movie he's like where is where is it? Where is it? And when she can't produce it, he's like, you're lying. And then, you know, he mm-hmm. kills her. And basically, once it comes out that it was all Iago, Iago mm-hmm. he fucking freaks out. It's pretty, it's pretty similar to the movie, but then again, it's not. Okay. Well, Luke and I were discussing it because he watched the last half of the movie with me. He liked it. Did he? He liked, oh, yeah, he... Uh, I mean, this says a lot about Luke, but he really liked Hugo. Um, well, yeah, he. We do have our differences. <laughs> uh, he he was saying how it was difficult to put a Shakespearean tragedy, which involves lots of death, yeah, in a high school setting. Yeah, because, because it doesn't the make stakes sense. Aren't as high. Why the fuck? This is your girlfriend. Mm. She's your girlfriend. That one, um, no, you fucking no. That one scene where he tells them that they're calling him names, and like he has that really like, super dark moment where he's just like, they don't know who they're fucking with. Like he sold it to me. Like I was like, he's he's gonna kill somebody. Yeah. Like he is on a ledge. Yeah. Like he, he the actor really crazy sold well. it. Yeah. yeah. And he did it slowly too. To where, because, you know, we talked about Horrible Bosses, how yeah, it, it escalates just, out of nowhere, and you're just yeah. like, what the fuck? But this, like, was kind of a slow burn until yeah. finally he was just like, I'm going to end you were this. Like, yeah, you are like, everything's normal, great, good, cool, whatever. And then you're like, okay, this is, mm-hmm. this is weird. Mm-hmm. Does Iago lurk in the play? He, I have not watched it, I, yeah, I only I, listened to it. So, yeah, like, that would be hard it doesn't, to they don't really say, Iago lurks in the distance <laughs> or whatever. But I imagine that he would, like, lurk, he would, like, uh, what's his name? Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah. Like, Varys or, like, uh, Littlefinger? Littlefinger. Mm-hmm. He's, like, around the corners listening to conversations. Josh Hartnett was, like, the lurk master in this movie. Yes. And, like, he was creepy without creeping me out. Yes. Um, Yes. Okay, so we've gone over the general plots. Yes. Okay, so um, the movie opens at a basketball game, and they really try to sell that this basketball game is, like, it's important. Everybody is in it to win it in a serious way. And yeah, like for some reason, it's not the final game. No. It's not. It's just a game. They're not, and they're like, not losing. This is th- right. They're not like these are our super arch rival. Yeah. I don't But Martin they're not Sheen like there's like, there's nobody in the stands, no college recruiters. Yeah. There's no reason for super, it to be. They so are just up. that serious about basketball. Yeah. Um but Martin Sheen also, I thought, did a really good job of selling 
like how little he appreciated his own son. Yes. Like when he talks about how he loves uh, Odin like his own son. Yes. And then he never once mentions his no. actual own son. No. Like that's fucked up. And Odin was not a senior. <laughs> Yeah, I don't... Which is don't. hard to believe. All teen movies, like, they will cast someone that's clearly not 17. Yes. But he's supposed to be, like, 16 or 15. Right. And he's clearly not. On Martin Sheen. The last thing that I had seen him in prior to this was Grace and Frankie. <laughs> and so the whole time, my brain, like had so much trouble reciprocating the two Mm -hmm. that I was just like what are you doing Martin Sheen (laughs) why is why is young you so angry it's funny that you say that because Martin Sheen to me is forever going to be uh Jed Bartlett from the West Wing the president (laughs) who's like constantly quoting presidents and he's very like you do the right thing for the right reasons 100% of the time like he's and this guy is just like, you win at any cost. Right. Like, he's not no, super like, underhanded, but it, they're very different types of men. And the yeah. whole time, I'm just like, Jed would not like this. Yeah, you're like, this <laughs> Mr. is Mr. President. Not, mm-mm. No, you're too shady. Mm-mm. He's really intense. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first thing that Hugo tries is a rape accusation. Like, he gets Roger, who's like the ultimate beta male of the early 2000s. <laughs> yeah. He gets Roger to do... He's like the Delta. (laughs) So he gets Roger to accuse Odin of raping Desi. Yes. Which is very short-sighted and stupid because it's very easy to just be... Well, I think he was thinking that they wouldn't even ask questions. They would just be like, oh, black guy, white girl. You're out. You're out. I'm thinking maybe because that is the only thing that makes sense to me because everything else he does is really calculated. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's just because... The first thing that he did that he assumed would work didn't, and then he became more calculated. Yeah. But I was just like, this is the easiest thing in the world to be like, no, that yeah. didn't happen. Done. Right. right. Just ask her. Mm, exactly. Just ask her. And uh, so then Odin, uh, he deals with Roger uh, like you yeah. would expect him to. Yeah. Hugo is doing steroids, which never pays off. Yeah. No. I really expected something to happen with that, but nothing ever does. He just no. does them. Yeah. It just, I think it was just establishing that he knew someone with a drug connection. Yeah. But was I was like, this dumb. never pays yeah, off. No, it was dumb. The guy that plays Odin and Julia Stiles have interesting chemistry. Yeah. It's not super spicy. It's not like they don't have any chemistry. Mm hmm. It's just weird. Yeah. It's almost like they're just like, they're just friends. Yeah. It's and they're trying. Like they're together for convenience. They're trying. Yeah. You know, when you get comfortable with someone mm-hmm. and there's not any or fire two, they, left. People expect you to be with. Yeah. So you're just like, eh. It was interesting. Uh, wasn't, it wasn't a passion worth dying for. Or being killed for. No. Yeah. I don't think so. She really starts to sell the romance when he's having doubts about her. Then I'm just like, oh, no, she's really into him. Because she's just like, why would you, like... Yeah. I put in my notes that I feel like Julia Stiles only plays Julia Stiles. I really I really feel like it's because the two movies that I can really... The only movie prior to this one that I could really place her in was 10 Things I yeah, Hate About You. Yeah, but she's like a total badass in that movie. Sure. But she's like, it's at the same place pretty much in her acting career. Mm-hmm. And it's not as evolved. Mm. And so I feel like it's just, she's playing like, the characters are different, but it's still Julia Stiles. Right. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. Uh, so Mike gets suspended. Coach is a huge drama queen because they, Roger gets fucking like stabbed in the stomach. And yeah. because him and Mike got into a fight, that was kind of weird. Yeah. And he got, he bounced back real quick from it. He did. But Mike gets kicked off the team, and O is upset with him because he couldn't, like, get a hold of himself. Oh, it was a broken bottle. Yeah, he fell on it. Roger fell onto the broken Mm -hmm. bottle because he was 
he was trying to start shit mm-hmm. because Hugo told him to. Hugo is a creep master. There's some, and he is in Mike's head. Like he gets in a lot of people's yeah. heads, and that all those scenes are really they pop to me because the way that they play it, where he's just like reading them. Yeah. Saying what needs to be said to get what he wants. Like, yeah. he does a really good job. Like, that scene where Michael comes in the room and Odin is behind the mm-hmm. thing. And he says and one he, thing really quiet and the yeah. rest really loud. He's like, hey, what's up with Desi? And then mm-hmm. real low, he's like, what about, about that Brandy? Bitch you yeah. yeah. And he's like, oh, man, she's whore. Mm-hmm. she sleep with me forever, even if she was married. Okay, that's weird. Yeah. So then, like, Mike and Desi start getting close, and Odin sees it and does not think, has no second thought about it. And then Hugo mentions something. Yeah. And then he starts, starts noticing it more. Eating at him. Mm-hmm. And then they have the montage of Mike and Desi. Yes. With O, o doing his own lurking. Yeah. There's lots of lurking in this movie. There's lots. Lots of looking out over like under your bangs yeah desi's roommate Mm -hmm. did they dress her down or is she really just like unfortunate looking because she is unfortunate looking in this movie it's it's audio sarah i don't see her no i mean but she was like oh in the do you think that they Uh, dressed her down did her makeup odd did her hair unflattering because to make Julia Stiles look better? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I'm like... But in the play, she's like a handmaid or something. Mm-hmm. She's she's not important. I mean, she is, but she's not. I mean, obviously, it's an adaptation set in high school, so there had to be changes made. Right. And I think the whole... Hugo is motivated really well by jealousy. Yeah. With the love of his father on the line. Like, all of that is really well motivated. The rape scene. Yeah. Is really rough. Yeah. And it's clearly... Honestly. Yeah. Anytime someone gets into a debate about rape and it's like, oh, it was consensual. And yeah. then when it... Because it can turn non-consensual. And yeah. that scene just... It it's, shows it very well. Yes. Because that is I a rape like, scene. Yeah. At first I was like... uh because uh, I was like, Hugo got into Odin's head, and then they started sleeping together, and then he started to get too rough, and I was like, too rough. And then I was like, oh, oh, now she's saying no. Now it's rape. It's, it's rape. It's definitely rape. And yeah. then they had the scene where she was talking to her roommate about it afterwards, mm-hmm. and her roommate was like, he raped you. Mm-hmm. And she was like, no. He loves me. No, he wouldn't do that. He did do that. But he did. Like, we all saw it, bro. Yeah, that was a rape scene. Yes. It was not... It was hard to watch. It was hard to watch, but it was not like girl with a dragon tattoo. No. Hard to watch. No. That's a different level. That is way different. Uh, Let's see. Hugo gets the scarf from the roommate. So Desi drops the scarf and when she leaves with Odin. And the roommate takes it. And yeah. gives it to Hugo. And she knew. She knew how important it was because they had that awkward skin to skin while she was in the room scene. Yeah. That was weird. Yeah. I'm not. <clears throat> no. 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 And uh, they had that weird scene where Hugo fucks her with the scarf over her face. Yeah. And she's okay okay with that yeah she's down she's like whatever and then she gets upset with how he uses it yeah and i'm like bitch you gave it to him what did you think he was gonna do i got i guess i got kind of confused because i thought and i know that it was the roommate but i felt like he was fucking brandy who's brandy the whore girlfriend of michael okay who's gonna be fucking him even when she's married (laughs) yeah I just love how he took that as a compliment instead of her being like, I would never in a million years marry you, but I'd fuck you anytime. Right. Like, like that's not exactly a compliment. Your dick game's strong. Your right. But everything else, not. Mm, pass. It's no. <laughs> yeah. Desi and Emily discuss the issues of consent. Yes. Uh, Desi's on the wrong side of that conversation. Yes. O shows up. He asks for the scarf and Desi can't find it. And Emily sits on that. Like, she could have at any point been like, you know what? 
I took it. Yeah. It was going to be a fun prank, even if that's what she thought it was. And I can't imagine a world in which she thought it was going to be a fun prank. Right. Well, when she sees how upset he's getting. Right. Like, that's when Why it's on you. Why would you not be like, hey, hey, I know, I know where this is. I'm sorry. So now, Od- like, Hugo is fully in Odin's head, and he is just blowing practice and lashing out. And then the coach, the next scene, the coach calls Hugo in to have dinner with him, and Hugo's like... We haven't had dinner together in a really long time. And it's really sad. Yeah, it's sad because he just wants his dad's attention. Right. And the first th- he doesn't even say, you know, it hasn't been a long time. He says nothing except what's going on with Odin. Yeah. Like he does not even acknowledge that his son spoke to him at all. Yeah. It That was sad. Yeah. But Hugo is kind of shitty. <laughs> yeah. Like I get it. Um, yeah. Odin does coke. Yeah, I said cocaine. Yeah, cocaine. It makes all your bad feelings good feelings. Yeah. And you don't want none of this shit. Um, Roger gets bullied. I don't really understand why Roger gets bullied because, like, he's a little tubby. But, like, I mean, he's rich. Yeah. And white. Yeah. And at a private school. Those things, with those powers (laughs) combined, I'm going to move this. With those powers combined, like, that's the recipe for success, bro. Like, right. What, what are you You're doing? You're living the American dream. Yeah. <laughs> You're white, rich, and super privileged. <laughs> so, Hugo approaches O. He tells them that Desi and Mike were together. And... Comes up with the plan. Yeah. He tells him the plan. And in as he's telling him the plan, they're he's showing it... Coke. Yeah, he's high on coke. Mm-hmm. He's already gotten it into his head. Mm-hmm. And then he tells them like the things that they're saying to one another. Yeah. And like she. Oh, yeah. Because he takes what Emily told him, the roommate. And yeah. He's just like, sometimes they don't even fuck. They just want to lay together skin to skin. Like, oh, yeah. He's that's said, I think what broke him. He said. And then they. Call yeah. Him he. Names. She told she she told him that. Or all they do is fuck because she told him all you do is skin to skin or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, yeah. oh, and then he's like, this is true. <laughs> so then he breaks the backboard because how would Hugo yeah. know that? Like, yeah, it, I mean, I understand why he bought what he was selling, because how would he know that? Right. And so he breaks the backboard. In yes. Rage. Yeah. The crowd freaking explodes. So then Hugo gives him more cocaine, yep. more false information. Yep. He manipulates a conversation with Mike so that it makes it sound even more like they're fucking. Mm-hmm. And then he gets the scarf and gives it back to O. He gets the scarf from Mike. No. Oh, the girl the storms girl in. Storms and she's just in. like, I want secondhand bullshit. And then he gives it to O. Yeah. And... Um, not and O doesn't know that Mike got the scarf from Hugo, right? So again, it just confirms, right? Which what is, is it? the plan? Confirmation bias. Yeah, when you already have a hypothesis, and you're yeah, making the yeah, the I can make anything look like I'm right. Well, almost anything. <laughs> so Hugo gets a gun. He lays out the plan. The plan goes awry, and it only goes awry because Roger is beta male Max, like right. No. It, on what fucking planet did Hugo not think to himself, man, Michael can definitely get the gun away from Roger's Roger bitch was ass. only supposed to come up, shoot him in the gut. That was it. He wasn't supposed to get out of the car. He wasn't supposed to hold the gun for any length of time. He was supposed to look up, shoot him in the gut. Right. But Michael wasn't supposed to open the door. Well, if he had shot immediately, he wouldn't have had a chance to. But and I think- in the plan, Hugo pushes him against the car. Ah, uh, yeah. So he doesn't have a chance to open the mm-hmm. door. Well, Hugo, I think the biggest... And that's the most <clears throat> criminal thing he does in the plan. Yes. Well, he was trying to keep his hands clean. Yeah. That he wanted to commit to all these murders, but he didn't actually want to get messy. Right. And because of that, it all goes to shit. Yeah. So he would have just gotten messy. He could have fucking handled it with a lot less. Yeah, if he had dead. planned to get messy, then yeah. he would have had a plan to clean it up. Yeah, but he didn't want to do that. No. So O does strangle Desi. Emily yes. 
spills the beans that Hugo, like... Is a bitch. He was the puppet master this whole time. Yep. And then Odin needs the truth from him, and he gets it, and then he makes sure to announce to everybody that it wasn't his rough upbringing... And yeah, I really liked it. Mm-hmm. His final speech. He's like, my mom's not on crack. It wasn't the streets that did this to me. It was this. He was like this white. Well, Hugo isn't super privileged. I mean, he's going to a private school, but it's only because his dad yeah. works there. Like they mentioned a couple of times that he doesn't have the things that the other kids have. Yeah, it's why he's so fucking <laughs> jealous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That and his dad's attention. Yep. Uh, so then Odin shoots himself, and yep. Hugo gets arrested. In the, in the gut. Yeah. That's he a shoots weird himself place. in like, a really weird way. Yeah. I thought he was going to swallow a bullet. Yeah. But he doesn't. He shoots no. himself, like, in the chest. It was, like... At a downward angle. Right. It Almost, like, when the gun goes off, and it shows, like, that flash for a minute, mm-hmm. which was stupid. Like, <laughs> really? Uh, it looked like it would have went into, like, his side, mm-hmm. almost, like, the front yeah. side of his abdomen. Yeah, they're, almost everybody that got shot, it feels like they could probably have recovered. Yeah, like, fucking <laughs> Michael got shot in the leg. Yeah, but they were acting like he died. Unless it caught his femoral artery, like, he's probably right. he's, just going to need he's, therapy. Yeah, he's, he's, therapy. Prob- he's got a concussion. Yeah. Yeah, that was the thing, like, I was just like, why didn't he just shoot him in the head? Like, he's a witness now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't leave him there. He knows that you hit him. Yeah. With a fucking... Crowbar. Yeah. What a bitch. What a bitch. Okay, so what did you like about this? Um... (laughs) It seems like... Maybe you didn't like a whole lot of that. <laughs> I liked Odin's eyebrows. I'm not sure that I noticed Odin's eyebrows. They were on a fleek. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I don't know if that's still what the kids are saying. I think that in a movie that lacks proper motivation for the tragedy part of it hugo was really well motivated i understood why he was doing what he was doing i even understood like if he could get odin to do all that shit i like i got why he wanted to do it like his plan only went sideways because he was trying to keep his hands clean right odin while on paper it doesn't seem like he had enough reason to do what he did that scene where he is like losing his shit. Yeah. I I believed him. Sure. Like um I thought that he did really well. Uh, Desdemona as a character Desi is pretty flat. Like she's just yes. a plot device to motivate other she's characters. She's a paper doll. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't really that's not on her. No, it's how she was written. I mean, she in the play, she doesn't have a big role. Mm-hmm. She's she's there. Right. She has some lines. She's important. Mm-hmm. But not. She's not a character of action. Yeah. Um, I didn't like how, like, murder just seemed like social suicide. Like, socially ruining people. Right. Getting them kicked off the team. That would have been... I feel like it would have rang better for me. Yeah, more true and believable. To, you know, it doesn't... It was very close to the the play. Mm -hmm. It was very close to the play. You know, adding some basketball. Like, trying to hurt someone and accidentally killing them... I feel like would have rang more true. Yeah, because this just, it seems so extreme. Yeah. And like, you know, you, I live in a world, we live in a world, Mm -hmm. everybody listening to this lives in a world where kids get shot at school and bad stuff happens. And, you know, this still was like, no. Yeah. This isn't going to fucking happen. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, who was your MVP? Odin. Odin? Yeah. I'll give it to Odin. All right. He played really well. Mm-hmm. I don't really have 
one. I guess Odin was all right. Um, I, the actor that played Odin was really good. Yeah. But I if, we're talk, if we're going on acting, I, I think that Josh Hartnett did a really good job. He did. He's just a bitch. Well, that's that character. character's a bitch. Yeah. Iago's a bitch. And I just, I don't like bitches. Yeah, I get um, that. At, when Roger was getting bullied, I put in my notes that I would fight people for Roger, even though he is a bitch. Mm, no. I, well, I was drinking. He has, a, he has enough privilege. I, I <laughs> like, if he's drinking. not utilizing it, that's on him. <laughs> you can pay for a girlfriend. Exactly. Like, you got enough money, go to a public school. They'll be jumping all up on you. Right? You don't have to go to a private school. You all right. go to a public school, you'll get all the public pussy. So, I was thinking that we might change up <laughs> the public pussy. <laughs> I was thinking we might change up the verdict because we encourage people to read it or to watch. And then, After we've and then we're just like, don't bother with this movie, even though we've already told people to watch. And they're only probably listening to it if they have. So, I was thinking, like... Would you recommend this to someone that hadn't seen it? No. I think it's worth it's worth seeing once, but it's not a movie mm. that I could watch over and over again. Mm. Yeah, I'll not I'll not watch this again. Mhm. Uh I feel like I felt better before I knew that this movie existed. <laughs> um, I've lowered the quality of your life by pushing this movie on you. Yeah. I feel like I don't like Martin Sheen as a mean guy. Right. Well, he was driven. I don't think that his, his intent was never to be cruel. But. But it was. And like, you know, intentions. You are know. meaningless. Well, it depends. Some people feel like the. What is it? Ends the, justify the means. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Yes. Fuck your intentions. <laughs> All right. So Vicky says, no, I say give yeah. it a watch once. Yeah. In conclusion, thank you for listening to our second... We're calling this our second season, right? Second season. Kick off. Yeah. Here Kick we off. go. New year. New year. Yes. Happy new, new season. Year. 2018. I said that really. 2018. 2018. I said 2018. 2018. There was a twang. Twang. So thanks for listening. Contact us on social media. Like us. Give us a five-star review. Email us at... Drama Mamas Podcast at gmail.com. Hit us up on Twitter. Vicky yeah. is taking the reins on Twitter. We are I at, am. at Drama Mamas Pod. We're, yeah, we're regularly, relatively regular. <laughs> Every few days, I'm like, hey, I should tweet something. Let me, <laughs> let me, let me try to hashtag some words. <laughs> and we are the Drama Mamas Podcast on Facebook. I, I think that we're both more tuned into our facebook page more yeah than anything else. well it's easier yeah because it's we, linked to our personal pages we know our facebook and i've got like i've got my personal twitter where i can switch between mm-hmm. the two with just a click of a button like i can on facebook but i'm not used to tweeting tweeting yep like speaking in 140 characters and hashtags it's different is not you know it's not my forte right but i'm working on it i think that's pretty much it next week we're going to do west side story yes. which is a modern ish take on <laughs> modern ish romeo okay. and juliet another tragedy yeah and then after that i think we're doing a comedy right no after that we're doing macbeth damn we yeah. really loaded it up with tragedies yeah that's all right West Side Story is funny. But after, even after if it's not Macbeth, I think maybe we have something a bit lighter. I think we have, oh yeah, we have the Lion King. Well, the Lion King has its light moments. Eh, so that's Hamlet. Damn it. I need to really look at our, my, I'm the one that posts all this shit. You do. <laughs> Why do I not know anything? I don't know. Anyway, so next week we're doing West Side Story. That I do know. <laughs> So, as always, remember to save the drama for these mamas. What? what? Next week on the Drama Mamas, I should have been Romeo. You should have. You would have been really good one with your big fucking tits and your long hair. <laughs> you fucking... Romeo, Romeo! Romeo! <laughs>